The Daily Wire has been all over the situation in Loudoun County, which has national implications because obviously it's going to be very important for this Virginia gubernatorial race. And should Terry McAuliffe lose the gubernatorial race in Virginia, basically that's the end of Joe Biden's agenda because a bunch of moderate Democrats across the country are going to look at their seats and think if Terry McAuliffe loses in relatively blue Virginia, that means that the American public are not happy with the agenda that we are currently pushing. And at that point, Joe Biden's agenda is basically dead until after the midterms and probably beyond that because the midterms don't look like they're shaping up well for him. So everyone is focusing in on Loudoun County. Our reporter, Luke Rosiak, over in Loudoun County has been doing an unbelievable job of uncovering the predations of the school board in Loudoun County and the Democratic Party infrastructure in places like Virginia and Loudoun County with regard to school boards. By the way, the kind of work that Luke is doing, that's really expensive and difficult work that can only happen because of our Daily Wire members. If you're already a member, thank you for making that happen because honestly, your membership helped pay for Luke. But if you're not a member, you really should join up and help our reporters do the kind of work that Luke is doing. It's making a huge difference out there. Head on over to Daily Wire right now and grab a membership. Obviously, this has become a flashpoint because the National School Board Union came out and basically requested that the FBI and DOJ investigate people who are going to school board meetings and sounding off on how the school boards were not doing their job in terms of educating and protecting their kids. Well, the the biggest story of the last couple of months came out via Luke a little bit earlier this week. That was the story surrounding a father who was made the face of the quote-unquote domestic terror movement by the national media. It turns out that that father was royally ticked off at one of these meetings, not because he was a domestic terrorist, but because, as it turns out, there's fairly good evidence, and he alleges that his daughter was raped in a public school bathroom by a bisexual boy wearing a skirt, and that the Loudoun County School Board refused to acknowledge that the sexual assault had even taken place, which might piss off even the best of us. And so this became a national story. Well, now it turns out there is even more. According to Luke Rosiak this morning, Loudoun County Public Schools did not record multiple known incidents of alleged sexual assault in schools dating back several years, despite a law that requires statistics about school safety incidents to be reported to the public and which includes provisions holding school superintendents personally liable for violations, a Daily Wire review of public records found. After the Daily Wire raised the discrepancy with the Virginia Department of Education, the VDOE spokesman, Charles Pyle, said VDOE is reviewing the discipline, crime, and violence data submissions of Loudoun County Public Schools and is in communication with LCPS to determine whether the division's reporting is accurate and whether the division is in compliance with state and federal law. The same law could have implications for a Loudoun County superintendent or principal in the wake of a May 28th alleged sexual assault in a bathroom, an incident first reported by the Daily Wire on Monday. On June 22nd, Superintendent Scott Ziegler told the public, quote, to my knowledge, we don't have any record of assaults occurring in our bathrooms. Virginia law requires that reports shall be made to the division superintendent and to the principal or his designee on all incidents involving sexual assault. The Daily Wire asked LCPS questions last week, including, quote, has Stone Bridge ever reported the May alleged sexual assault in any statistics or made anyone aware of it? LCPS hid behind state law with Director of Communications Joan Salgren replying, quote, any information related to student information is confidential under state and federal laws regarding student privacy. However, state law actually requires statistics on assault and other incidents in schools to be reported to the public in the form of annually updated statistics available on a public database called Safe Schools Information Resource administered by the Virginia Department of Education. In other words, the school board and the school does not have to report to the public the name of the people involved, the juveniles involved, but they do have to report the numbers. LCPS reported to the state that Stonebridge had zero sexual assaults for the 2020 to 2021 school year, which includes May 28, 2021. Virginia law says the, super, the division superintendent shall annually report all such incidents to the DOE for the purpose of recording the frequency of such incidents on forms that shall be provided to the department and shall make such information available to the public. The issue with missing sex assault statistics in Loudoun is not limited to the latest case, raising the prospect that untold numbers of sexual assaults and other infractions have gone unreported. In October 2018, in a case that was widely reported by the media at the time, three football players at Tuscarora High, Tuscarora High were arrested and charged with sexual assault. A source told local media it's believed a younger player was held down by teammates who inserted victims who inserted objects into the victim in a locker room. A spokesperson for LCPS said at the time, the case will be subject to disciplinary action. The annual report for Tuscarora that year reported zero instances of sexual offenses against students. LCPS provided no response at all to the Daily Wire's questions about the reason for the zero figures despite having two days to do so. While the suspect in the May 28th alleged assault was not arrested until July 8th, 
Following the conclusion of an investigation, police officers were present at the school that day. Law enforcement was notified and a police report was filed, though it was not clear who filed the report. Pyle, the state spokesman, told, said that the SSSR's mandatory reporting is not contingent on the filing of charges by law enforcement or subsequent convictions. In other words, if this was reported to the cops, that just means that it has to be reported in the stats. But it wasn't reported in the stats. Additionally, the safety stats for that school year were not due to the state until July 16th. And in the case of Tuscarora, the school year did not end until months after the incident and arrest, yet the district still reported zero and has for every single year since. On Wednesday, LCPS put out a statement. It did not send it to the Daily Wire. It said, quote, Loudoun County Sheriff's Office was contacted within minutes of receiving the initial report on May 28th. Once a matter has been reported to law enforcement, LCPS does not begin its investigation until law enforcement advises LCPS it has completed the criminal investigation. Furthermore, we can't discipline any student without following Title IX grievance processes. But an email from Stonebridge Principal Tim Flynn, which was sent to the entire community at 4.48 the day of the alleged rape, told students and parents that, quote, there was an incident in the main office area today that required the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office to dispatch deputies to Stonebridge. This corresponds to the story offered by Scott Smith, the victim's father, who said the police arrived because the school called them on him for making a scene about his impression it was not treating the incident seriously. So this is a disaster area for Loudoun County. If it turns out that the Loudoun County schools have not been reporting these stats on sexual assault to the public, just another indicator that when you have institutions that are very powerful, they have every incentive to cover up all of the bad things happening within those institutions. This is true across institutions. People develop institutional loyalty when they work for those institutions. And they don't want to report the bad stuff happening inside the institutions. And that's how you end up with children being put in danger. Now, for the left, they don't care, apparently, if those children are put in danger by the public schools. And there, there are a wide variety of cases in which teachers have, have made prey out of their students in public schools across the country. Those statistics are, in fact, somewhat available. It's a national story when it's the Catholic Church. It's not a national story when it turns out that it's the public school system, obviously, even though there are many, many more members of the public school system in the United States than there are members of the Catholic Church who are subject to priest predation. Okay, there's certainly an ideological component here. Okay, meanwhile, the family of that girl who was allegedly raped in her school bathroom is now pursuing civil action against the Loudoun County Public Schools under Title IX. So there will, in fact, be a lawsuit. The parents of the young girl stated, quote, subsequent to the sexual assault on our daughter, Loudoun County Public Schools formalized the policy regarding restroom use that was easily exploitable by a potential sexual assailant. Because of poor planning and misguided policies, Loudoun schools failed to institute even minimal safeguards to protect students from sexual assault. The lawyer for the family says the conduct of Loudoun County schools and the Loudoun School Board directly resulted in the brutal rape of Smith's daughter at Stonebridge High. It only takes an instant to see how Loudoun County schools have adversely affected this family and have harmed their daughter. So all of this has resulted in some pretty bad news for Terry McAuliffe, who's running for governor of Virginia and who is completely in hock to the teachers unions in the state of Virginia. He was asked yesterday, about whether parents should be in charge of education. And this, of course, remains a major issue right across the country. Parents would like to be in charge of their children's education. Public schools are delegated your kids to educate them in the ways that you see fit. They're not delegated to the power to educate them solely as they see fit. Because frankly, they are not qualified to do so nor empowered to do so. That is not the purpose of local public schools. And the federalization of the process has made this worse. It's created a massive disconnect between the bureaucrats who are supposed to educate your children and you. This is why, increasingly, parents are taking their kids out of the public schools, putting them in private schools, homeschooling them, trying to find charter schools, doing anything they can to remove, to remove the monopoly on indoctrination now provided by liberal teachers' unions and the, and the state-run schooling system. Okay, so Terry McAuliffe was asked about all of this because he had said in open debate with Glenn Youngkin in Virginia, that parents essentially have no interest in the education of their kids. It's really the state's job to educate the kids. Here is Terry McAuliffe erupting when asked about it. Right, Who do you think should be in control of education if not Virginia parents? Vaccinated? Yeah, that's the question I want to know. You Who do you think should be in control get, of get education if not Virginia parents? Governor, was it a mistake You're dangerous for schools here. to be closed last year? I'll build education. That's why uh, Fox school. News has me leading. Glenn Youngkin will destroy Virginia's education system. What a joke Terry McAuliffe is. What a joke. So he's asked whether parents should be in control of education. And he starts lecturing the guy about a mask. They're standing outside. He's literally walking to his car. If you can't see the clip, he's literally walking to his car 
and just yelling at this reporter saying that he should be wearing a mask. And then he says, I'll take care of education. Glenn Youngkin will destroy it. Yeah, sure. Sure. So Terry McAuliffe is in real trouble in this race. Okay, this should not be a close race. The, the Virginia political map has been turning blue for quite a while right now. The results in Virginia in the 2020 election were heavily in favor, of course, of Hillary, uh, in favor of Joe Biden. Joe Biden won the state by 10 points in 2020. Right now, Youngkin, is run, who's a relative no-name, is running neck and neck with Terry McAuliffe, a former Virginia governor. Okay, so the fact that this is even close is a referendum on how bad people think democratic governance is, even in democratic states. This has relegated Terry McAuliffe to basically trying to treat Glenn Youngkin as though he is Donald Trump and also Greg Abbott, which of course is not true. Here is Terry McAuliffe trying to say that Glenn Youngkin is going to ban abortion in the state of Virginia, which of course is not going to happen. I mean, unfortunately from my point of view, but that's not what's going to happen in the state of Virginia. I protected women's rights. He is going to ban abortions. We got him on tape saying that wants to ban abortions in Virginia. And I'll tell you, Andrew, that's a real issue for everyone today. For 50 years, we thought the Supreme Court would protect everybody with Roe v. Wade. Trump's Supreme Court, if Glenn Youngkin is elected governor of Virginia, abortions will cease. And I got to tell you, it's dangerous for women, dangerous for doctors, and you can't bring businesses. I've recruited Amazon to Virginia. They're not coming to a state that discriminates. He's having a really tough time, McAuliffe, putting a target on Youngkin's back because McAuliffe is the issue here, not Trump and not Youngkin. And when it comes to education, Americans have very simple questions to ask, like, why are you guys doing an unbelievably crappy job? Brand new report out says the nation's 13-year-olds are less proficient in math and reading than they were almost a decade ago. That is not because of the COVID pandemic. That was data collected before the start of the pandemic and released on Thursday, according to the National Assessment of Education Progress. This is political reporting. This is the first time these scores have dropped in either subject in the 50-year history of the test. The students who struggle the most with the exam have fallen further behind, a worrisome result that suggests learning loss exacerbated by the pandemic could be catastrophic. Math scores fell furthest among students whose performance ranked in the 10th and 25th percentiles, meaning test takers with the lowest math scores in 2020 did worse than students who struggled the most when the test was last administered in 2012. The data also shows the achievement gap between white and black test takers widened. Nationally, math scores for 13-year-olds fell on average by five points. Reading scores declined on average three points. None of these results are impressive, said the commissioner of the National Center for Education Statistics. They're all concerning. The math results were particularly daunting. So basically, your schools are failing to educate kids, particularly the kids who are at the lowest end of the spectrum. And meanwhile, they're indoctrinating them in all the worst values and not protecting them. And you wonder why we have a schools crisis right now? You wonder why so many parents are interested in pulling their kids out of school? And you wonder why so many people are looking askance at Democratic administrations who seem solely concerned with pleasing teachers unions? You, you wonder why so many Americans are upset with maybe the FBI and the DOJ doing the bidding of the very people who are failing to educate their kids and then claiming complete plenary authority over those children? None of this is good news for Democrats. Who's got two thumbs and wants you to like and subscribe?